Hello and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. In today's video, we'll be exploring how to set up your own custom VPN that is private to you, it's fast, and most importantly, it's going to be free. Oh, and of course, how can I not forget, it's going to be completely unblockable. That's the most important thing because you can get free VPNs in plenty of places, right? Or you, with just a dollar or two for, per month, you can get a paid VPN. But what I'm going to be showing you guys in this video is mainly for those um, who really want either privacy or they're, uh, they're in a country where the government restrictions are so tight that they even block VPNs, um, such as a country like China. And the technique that I'm going to be sharing with you guys in this video is actually something I learned from them. Um, for, like I learned that the people in China actually use this technique because it's that effective um, and it basically bypasses any of the restrictions that they have out there. So if it works for them, it's going to work for pretty much anyone else, right? So let's get started. Now, let me give you a high level overview of what we're going to do. Basically, this involves us setting up a V2Ray server. This is an open source project. Uh, basically allows you to set up your own tunneling system where you can basically get your IP forwarded to uh, the IP to the server. So basically, let's say you set up the server in the US, uh, you can basically uh, access the internet through that IP in the US. And what we're going to be doing essentially is setting up a, setting up a virtual machine uh, anywhere in the world, okay? And then we'll be setting up the server on that virtual machine. Then we'll be connecting, we'll be downloading a client on our own devices. And we'll use that client to connect to the server. And we can then access the internet from there. Okay, so that's the gist of what we'll be doing in today's video. So let's get started. Now, as I mentioned, this is going to be completely free. Okay, you don't need to... Uh, this is a free project, it's open source, it's not paid or anything. The only thing that we really need to be concerned about is the virtual machine, the device on which we're going to be running the server. Now luckily there are some free virtual machine providers, some free cloud providers from whom we can get a virtual machine. Now uh, there are two people that I would like to mention in particular. One is Oracle. Uh, Oracle is uh, what they have actually discovered them just a few weeks ago. Uh, they actually offer you a virtual machine plan uh, for free. Okay, you can sign up for a free account, uh, no credit card, no nothing, and you can get um, these virtual machines. So you can um, let me show you. You set up a domain. Okay, you can pick your build. Okay, like uh, I go for Ubuntu. And we can go for it like 22. And over here, you can select what kind of machine you want. And it's these ones, if I remember correctly, that they offer on the free plan. I think, yeah, you can actually change this. Now, I don't recall the exact amount that they offer for free. Uh, I think it's something like 4 CPUs and 24 GB is what I heard. That's on the free plan. Your second option is going to be something like, at least, sorry, the second option that I would suggest, because there are obviously dozens of options out there. So another option is Microsoft Azure. And, you know, Azure gives you, like, some free credits for, like, a year. So you can use Azure if you want to. Uh, they're a bit too expensive to buy a virtual machine from if you're not doing something like uh, credits or something uh, or if you're maybe part of a company, so you get um, you have Microsoft Partner or something, or you're a student and you can get free credits from there. Uh, there are many ways of getting credits in Azure, or if you want to pay for it, then sure, you can do that too. Um, so I'm going to be using Azure, but you can use any virtual machine. I'm more familiar with Azure, so I'm going to use that. Uh, but what I'm going to show you in today's video is just something that uh, you need you just need a Linux machine to run it on. It doesn't matter whether it's a virtual machine, a physical machine, whatever. You just need a Linux machine. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go into virtual machines. I already have one over there, um, but we'll create a new one. Okay, so just follow the steps, okay, and that's really what you need to focus on and reproduce those steps for whatever service that you're going to be using. Okay, you can select a resource group and select uh, a name tutorial, select whatever region you want it to be in, and uh, be sure you 
are careful about what region you pick because if you pick the US then it's going to be a US uh, IP that you get assigned and if you pick Asia it's going to be an Asian uh, Asian you know IP so let's say I go for Europe okay and then you can pick an availability zone uh, no I think those might be paid anyway so let's just stick to the bare minimum we don't need anything fancy we can go for like the latest Ubuntu let me just go to zone 3 and now I got it okay good uh, burstable is like the lowest tier that uh, Azure offer it's burstable in the sense in, in the, what that means is that uh, it, it doesn't offer uniform performance it offers performance in like short bursts uh, you know like so if you only need it for like a, a couple of times a day it's suitable for that but it's not suitable for like 24 7 usage all right so what you're going to do um whatever service you're using you'll need to ssh into it most likely uh if we're doing windows actually you can do windows if you want to by the way this uh, what i'm going to show you uh this this the service open source service it actually works for other systems as well so you can use windows if you have a windows vm you'll be rdping into it remote desktop connection okay so those are some slightly different credentials Anyways, just uh, define the username, uh, generate a key pair, and yeah. Okay. Looks good. Okay. Uh, allow selected ports. Okay. We'll, we'll want that. Then review and create. Now it's asking me to download these, so I'm just going to download them. Okay. And do keep these safely, okay, because you'll need these to log in. All right, so our deployment is created. Now let's go to our resource, and here it's it's running. Okay, good. There's our public IP, and we'll be using this later on to connect. So now let's connect to our virtual machine. We'll click on connect. Go on connect over here, native SSH. Okay, it's uh, built into Windows, by the way, ever since like Windows 10 version uh, build 18.09. And if you don't have it, just update your Windows or just, you know, go and enable it in the Windows features. Okay. So over here, what we're going to do is open up our terminal. All right. And now what we're going to do is just follow the steps over here. Paste the path to our key. And then just copy this. Okay. Copy this command and we can SSH right into our machine. And of course, um, no one else can because you have the key okay so it's secure all right now we're assessed into it okay great right into our machine and now begins the tricky part slightly so now we're going to go over here and by the way i'll include all these links in the description below don't worry along with some instructions so just copy this command over okay paste it in here this is going to install the server into our machine. And let's just copy the, copy the next command in the meantime. So what this is going to do is set up this uh, the server as a system. As a system, um, I can't remember exactly what this is for, uh, but it, it creates it like a service, okay? So if you like enable the VM, it's going to like boot up along with it. Okay, so in case your VM shuts down, for example, you shut down your VM, uh, you don't want it to be in use, so then you can just enable your VM and this service will start automatically. Okay, so uh, you can manually start it as well uh, with this command and also check a status uh, while it's running with this command. Okay, so this should be done. Yes, it is. So let's run this command. Okay, so it's asking me for my password. Now this is weird because uh, I used I didn't use a password right so I'm pretty sure I know what the deal is over here. I think you need to like sudo it. Okay, so I figured it out. You just needed to like do sudo dash i and you're in as the root user. Okay, I keep forgetting to do that. So just uh, copy this again and put this here. This should run just fine. Okay, cool. So the next thing we need to do is this. This is going to generate a random ID for us to use. Okay, and this will be relevant later. Just keep that in mind. Um, we'll leave that there for now. Okay, so this is the config.json. Okay, so which we're going to open up in Vim. 
All right, it's empty. Okay, um, of course, we just started this up, so that's fine. Now, what we're gonna do is go over to the official website for V2Ray, and somewhere over here, there's gonna be a guide for the server. Okay, there, this is what we want. So we're gonna go here and in Vim, and you just need to know enough of this to actually use it. Just press I for insert mode. Now we're in insert mode. Uh, remove that text and I just right clicked and the text get pasted in here. Okay. And I'm not in insert mode. Okay. Sorry. Now, um, here I'm going to, I hate that noise. It keeps pinging me. So here we have the port, the protocol, uh, the protocol, and we have an ID. Okay. We need to change the ID. And this is where I really regret that I did not copy uh, that. So let me just exit out. Okay, press escape to exit uh, insert mode. Press uh, control colon and press W, Q, W for write, Q for quit. Okay, let's just copy this. And we'll go back into this. Press I for insert mode. And let's just navigate over to ID. Okay, paste our ID in there, control V, and everything else looks good. Uh, okay, is there anything else we're missing? I hope not. Okay, looks good. So now we'll just uh, escape, uh, control colon, WQ, we're out, and we'll restart the server so that our changes take effect, the changes that we just made in the config.json. And we'll uh, also show you this command this will show us that our server is running. If you made a mistake, if you made a mistake in the config.json, so you type made a typo, syntax error, it's not going to be running or if something else is wrong, okay? So you need to have this done. Now, the next thing you want to do is you need to set up the client, okay? We just set up the server. The server is running. Anyone in the world can connect to it right now. You guys have even seen the client ID. If you guys uh, just take this IP over here, and take the client ID, take the port, you guys can log in. It's that simple. Um, but let me show you how to set up the client on your own Windows machine or any machine for that matter. So there's two ways of doing it. I'll show you the GUI method. The other method is just uh, fine as well. You can do it through the CLI. The repo is called v2ray uh, without the N, the, 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 the normal one, the CLI one. But the one with N over here is the GUI one. And you can even download this one on phone. Uh, the one on phone is called v2ray ng. So that's the one for Android. And once I show you how to do this on Windows, on the desktop, you'll be able to do the exact same thing on Android. I don't even need to make a video for that. It's, it's just that simple. It took me 10 seconds. I've already tried that. Okay, so what you're gonna do is come over here to this repo and you'll go into releases. And um, over here, and just go to the latest version. You can download the Linux version if you're a Linux user or download the Windows version. Okay, and once you have the Windows version open, uh, extract it. You don't need to install anything. It's just a portable exe, okay? So here's the v2ray client in front of us, the GUI client. Could go on servers add a VMS server. If you remember, that's the protocol we picked when setting up the server. Create a name. And here's gonna be the IP address of our server. We'll just copy that. There we go. And our port was the default port being used over here. And the UUID is what we generated. So, um, wait, where was that? It's in our it's right here somewhere. Okay, so where is it, where is it? There we are. Take that, just put that in here and confirm. There is one more thing we need to do. So go into edit server here and we can see that there are two options in the core types, X-ray and Syncbox. Uh, I don't know too much about these, but basically they're dependencies that uh, v2ray needs. It needs one of either two of these, okay? So we'll go with x-ray. That's the one I've tried before and it works. So just go over to their github right here. And again, I'll leave the link in the description below, okay? So just go to releases and just like we did before, 
download the one for your operating system. You can download the latest version. So you can get the Linux or Windows. Okay, I already have Windows installed. Sorry, I mean downloaded. Just go into your bin folder and paste the exe in here. Okay, like this. And then just extract it. This x-ray folder should already be created. If it's not, just, just make it. So just extract it so that all of these files are in the root directory of the x-ray folder. Okay, and then let's just go and, uh, you know, edit this over here. Change the core type to x-ray. That's it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is do a ping test. Test servers with TC ping. And this is most likely not going to work. Let me just check that. Yeah, it's not working. Minus one means it's not connecting. Okay, so why isn't it connecting? So let me show you what the problem is. Basically come over to your network settings. And the problem is right now that we only have SSH access. That's the only port that's open. Okay, so what you'll need to do is come here and create a rule. So what you can do if you wanna be really secure is like enter your own IP in here. So basically anything that's not your own IP, like if you go to, uh, uh, well, I don't wanna close this command prompt. Let's open up a new one. So you can do like IP config and this will give you your IP. So you can use that, uh, you can like put your IP in there and that'll make sure that only you can access this machine. Okay, no, no one else. So even if someone gets your details, your client ID and stuff, they can't access your machine. Okay, um, but we'll just leave this as any for now. Okay, so uh, what we wanna do is open up the 10,086 uh, destination port which is where our server is connected. Next, you want to come here into outbound port rules and we'll add a new one, okay? And here, what we're going to do is keep the source as the IP, sorry, the port on our server and the destination will be uh, asterisk. And yeah, that's it. So once this is connected, we should be able to uh, connect to our server. Okay, and I already did a test run before, so that's why it's already showing uh, a delay over there. So if you just do this, see, it's working. Okay, uh, you can see that we're getting a delay. And you can even do a speed test over here, by the way. And this is actually gonna like check your download speed. Open up a new browsing window, type in what's my IP address, uh, and wait, hold on. There's actually one thing we need to do. Come over here and set the system proxy, okay? This enables, uh, you know, the VPN. And if you ever wanna disable it, you can do clear system proxy, okay? And uh, just set that auto refresh on. It's gonna update your logs, okay? And make sure you click on set as active server just in case it already isn't. If you have multiple servers in here, the active server is the one with the blue highlight like we have right now because we only have one server, okay? So come over here and type what's my IP address and uh, let's go over here and there we go, there's our IP. So we can already see that it's the same IP and if you like look at the location over here in this little map, you can see that it's in, it's in Ireland somewhere uh, in Europe. So, you know, it worked. And that's it. That's literally the video. We're, we just set up a VPN. It's fast. It's um, secure because you're the only one using it. You're not going to end up getting blocked or, you know, you won't have to face those annoying pop-ups that say that you are uh, a, a bot or something because, you know, you're the only one using this IP. And there's so many, so many benefits. And if you're using a free service like Oracle, it's all free. Great, right? Hope you guys found this useful and interesting.